This year's Euros have already given us plenty of memorable moments for both good and bad reasons. We've said goodbye to a number of once-in-a-lifetime talents and also said hello to others who will soon take over the game. Now, at the business end of the tournament, there are surely going to be a lot more shocking moments, but we wanted to take a look at the craziest things that have happened so far. <laughs> We begin with one of those players we've said hello to at this tournament, Lamine Yamal. The youngest player to ever feature at the Euros has been pivotal to Spain, who now find themselves in the semi-final. He's mostly been doing his damage during the first half, as midway through the second half, manager De La Fuente has been subbing him off. Mostly, people thought it could be because of homework, or just not to overwork him, but it's actually because of German labour laws. According to the host nation's law, People under the age of 18 cannot work past 8pm on any given day. However, there is leeway for athletes who are allowed to go on until 11pm. Spain have mostly been playing at the late kickoff times and therefore their games run the risk of going past 11. De La Fuente thus takes precautions and makes sure to sub him off before it's too late or else the Spanish FA would pay a fine of €30,000. Now in the semis and maybe finals, we reckon that they'll take the fine if it means winning the tournament. Spain will face off with France for a chance in the Euros final in what is sure to be an amazing game. The French haven't been playing great football but have been able to get the job done when needed. A crazy fact that's been doing the rounds lately is that they've gotten to the semis without scoring a goal from open play, the first team to ever do this. In five games so far in the tournament, all of France's goals have come either from own goals or penalty kicks. They've also had two goals draws, with the most recent one against Portugal going to a penalty shootout. You wouldn't have expected this from an attack with the likes of Mbappe and Dembele. Their saving grace has been that even though they're struggling to score, they haven't conceded from open play either. The only goal they've let in so far was a penalty to Lewandowski. Let's see if they can keep this up against the highest scoring team at the tournament. During the penalty shootout against Portugal, Usman Dembele stepped up to take a spot kick and calmly slotted it home. Home. Sounds pretty normal so far, right? The surprising part comes from the fact that he scored with his right foot, which is supposed to be his weaker side. An old interview he once did has therefore resurfaced where, when asked what his stronger foot is, he said left. He was then asked why he takes penalties with his right foot and proceeded to say that he shoots better with that foot. This is the reason why it's always been a nightmare defending the Frenchman because he can shift the ball onto either foot and still score. He gives new meaning to the word versatile. Moving on to England. They recently had a very tense game against Slovakia and emotions ran high. They eventually made the breakthrough in extra time and won the game, but their star, Bellingham, was caught on camera making making an X-rated gesture towards their opponent's bench. UEFA launched an investigation into his actions and he was fined €30,000 for violating the basic rules of decent conduct. He was also given a one-match suspended ban, which means he's able to play against Switzerland, but will have to serve a one-match ban if he breaks any conduct rules within the next 12 months. On the same day, Turkey also lost Demiral to a two-game ban for making a nationalistic gesture during their win against against Austria. This led to many fans questioning the two decisions and wondering why the Turkish player had to miss his country's immediate games, but Bellingham can still play. Maybe the severity of gestures aren't considered similar, or maybe they simply didn't want England to lose their golden boy. What do you think? Spain played a great game against host Germany to book their semi-final spot, and this was thanks to Mikel Marino, who produced a huge leap to head the ball past Neuer in the dying minutes of extra time. His goal and then the full-time whistle sparked scenes of joyous celebration among the Spanish supporters in Stuttgart. But what got a little lost in the mayhem was an incredible detail of the midfielder's goal celebration. After being mobbed by his teammates, he trotted over to the corner flag and ran around 
around it while pumping his fist. The routine appeared a little odd, but it turns out that Marino was replicating the celebration his father performed 33 years ago in the very same stadium. What is even crazier is that the very same commentator was in the booth to commentate on both goals for Spanish TV. We finish off by talking about the main character of Euro 2024, Own Goals. And they are level. There have been nine own goals in 44 games so far. To put this into context, the joint top scorers of the tournament only have three goals each, and the highest scoring nation, Spain, have only netted 11 times. In the last 16 Euros before this year, there have only been 20 own goals, with a whopping 11 coming from the previous edition in 2021. That record is seriously under threat with the remaining games to come. So what exactly is going Going on and why have own goals become so common? We're going to leave you with that question and you can let us know what you think in the comments. Remember to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to turn on bell notifications so that you never miss out on any new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!